Welcome to Fright Night. For real. All right. Welcome back to Fright Night Flicks, your go-to horror movie review podcast. I'm Dan, and this is... uh, Darren, hi. (laughs) That's him. The most unnatural way to do it. That's that's Darren. (laughs) I think that's fitting. So before you ask, and if you're new to the show, we are identical twins. Each week we review a horror movie, and uh, I don't know, we give fun, stupid, kind of informative reviews. Yeah, I'd say our favorite types of movies, too, are just like campy horror movies oh dude campy's definitely our favorite we don't like to take it seriously we just like to have fun and watch movies and give our opinion yeah we like to give the stupidity of horror movies because there always is a little bit yeah and so is our opinion sometimes too you know agreed yeah. agreed <laughs> this week we'll be reviewing fright night which is fitting because that is the name of our show yeah i guess we're named after it yeah we i've never seen it we've never seen this movie <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start off we'll give a brief overview initial impressions then we'll break down just the different points a scary absurd frightening hilarious stupid whatever we'll find whatever we can find in each scene and there always is a lot believe it or not every scene there's always or every horror movie is filled with just what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> like, is this AI that wrote this? Uh, <laughs> and it's AI, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think that's AI. I think I wrote that. <laughs> I feel like you're not even into it. You're just yeah, like, you're right. every movie is full of these scenes. You know what, guys? You're not going to hear that line again. I don't even like <laughs> <laughs> Your heart wasn't in that line. No. So and then we'll, we will finish with our final review, and then we'll go over uh, what you may have missed in the movie, where we go over like bloopers, outtakes, Continuity errors, and we call that our scared, stupid segment. So, now, before we get into the show, we have a special ad. It's our first ad. You know who it's brought to you by? I think I do. It's us, right? It's us. (laughs) (laughs) So maybe you love the podcast, want to help support the show, and get yourself some additional content, and we got you covered. Check out Fright Night Flicks Patreon, where we give you a monthly bonus podcast. That's a guarantee. Boom. We got you. You will also get early access to each episode because we some of these we do kind of early, so that's kind of yeah. Cool. These typically are like three days early is when I post them on the Patreon. Yeah, and you'll get ad free episodes. Eventually, we will actually have ads on here and a nice little like carrot Discord access where you can hang out, talk horror movies. You like horror games too? We talk about that. Yeah. So right now we already have two but uh, two movies you get as a paid member. Right? We have Candyman. And we have uh, Pooh, Blood, and Honey, which was so stupid, but it was actually fun to do. I actually enjoyed that one. Or for free, you could just join up and get uh, Terrifier. We did Terrifier review. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So maybe you don't have the extra cash. Hey, we get it. But you want to still support the show? Leave a review on Apple, Spotify. If you leave it on Apple and actually leave a comment, we'll read it on here. Sure. And I think eventually we got to do something to like get these numbers up. I think we're going to have to offer something additional here. For, oh, for the reviews? Yes. Okay. I think we need to motivate you guys a little more. <laughs> uh, let's do it. We're at 16 right now. We got to get it up higher. Like we need like to, we should be at like 50 on this thing. I think so. Well, we have a high YouTube listener, our audience base, right? That's true. That's probably what it is. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> we'll think of something fun for now. Just give your reviews. It's greatly appreciated. Eventually we're going to do, I don't know, maybe we'll do some type of giveaway. I don't know. Sure. All right. So this week we're going over Fright Night. It was made in 1985. A great year. Yeah. Many great, th- many great things. Maybe a couple great things <laughs> in this room were made that year. <laughs> well, we were, I don't know if we were technically made that year, but we came out that year. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Technicality. <laughs> All right. This is directed by Tom Holland. It's a horror vampire supernatural thriller uh, starring Chris Randall, William Ragsdale, Amanda Barissa, Barissa, Bercy. My favorite part is listening to you try to read these names. Yeah, sometimes I just <laughs> blow through them to pretend like I know, whatever. I can't do it. And either. Rodney McDowell. So, quick brief like overview. This is apparently a horror movie classic, right? It's my understanding that would be the case, yes. I've talked to many elders around me. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real though, me and you, obviously, we, didn't, we never watched this. I've always heard of the movie, and I did watch the remake, but it's been so long, I honestly didn't remember what it even was. But I see why this is a classic. It's a it's a fun campy horror movie. If it's even horror, I don't even know technically if it's horror. Yeah, I guess it. Yeah, it's really not that scary. Yeah, you're right. It is campy, and it's definitely up our alley. I mean, there's some like. Here's the thing. I I'll say this. I like the whole movie. I like the movie as a whole. I think it was a really fun movie, and there's some cool effects. I don't. I don't think they're practical effects. (laughs) 
<laughs> I like, think they are exactly practical are effects. What do you think they are? I don't know. There's do a lot you know of what light. a practical effect is? Yeah, it's real, right? It's not CGI. Yeah. But there's a skeleton part, which I don't know. Maybe some practical, I some that, not so. I think it's all practical. All right. I mean, I don't think they had a whole lot of options back yeah, then. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think it it's just filmed in a weird way where it kind of melts and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know what you're saying. There were a couple weird things. Doesn't matter. It, oh. But even those things were fun to watch. And the, I, I like the, being around the kids and being hunted by a vampire. Again, we've seen this, this whole scenario so many times where. There's someone next door and then the kid sees it and they're like, you know, they're bad. And he's trying to, the whole movie is trying to convince everyone what's going on. Like, you know, I just really, we really even say really what it is about. No, it's, it's <laughs> a kid. It's basically a few kids. There's the vampires that move next door and the shenanigans they get in to try to expose the vampires. And then there's some battle with vampires. You know what this movie really is? It's a convincing movie. The whole movie is the kid trying to convince everyone that there's a vampire. I think it's more of a vampire child predator movie okay that okay there's some problematic things here okay, too you notice this we uh, didn't talk about I, of this. course i noticed this we didn't, <laughs> we didn't talk about this and i i have some things we gotta say let's let's just wait let's just get in the movie before we do uh, we always like to go over on tomatoes critics gave it an 83 percent which i mean critics eh. uh <laughs> the audience that's i consider that us yeah we're men of the people 76 percent it's it's yeah. so funny i don't respect critics either I just don't usually agree with them. Oh, most of the time, like it, the best review is if the audience is high and the critic is like a little bit below it, then you're kind of like, okay, it's probably good. You know, yeah. actually when the audience just high, it's usually good. Sure. All right. All right. Let's get into it. Fright night. So the movie starts off in it pretty like off, like quick. You meet the three characters, whether you know it or not. So there's Charlie, who's like a horror obsessed kid. There's Amy is his girlfriend and you meet Peter Vincent. You don't actually meet him. They're watching a TV where his show, like it's a, he, uh, it's actually called Fright Night. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Was there a show back in the day called Fright Night? There might be. Uh, maybe not though. Maybe, maybe this whatever. is the show. I think this is the show. Yeah, from I think back you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Peter Vincent, he's a famous vampire hunter. Okay. Trust me. He'll come back into this movie. All right. So Amy, Charlie and Amy are in the room. And we're, I'm going to do like the whole baseball analogy. Cause I don't want to make it too like over the top, but sure they're, they're, you know, around in first base in the relationship. Like they're making out heavy petting. I have a question. Yeah. So you may have noticed they weren't on the bed. No, they were next to the bed on the floor, but I totally get this. <laughs> this is why, this is why I actually like this movie a lot. <laughs> I totally get it too. So go ahead. Okay. They're at home. His mom's downstairs. <laughs> They're messing around. You got to hide in yeah. case that door flies open. You guys are watching next to the bed. This is something I would do. I, I feel like I've done this, to be honest with you. I actually agree. I, yeah, think, I, I, I think I've done the same move, which it's like, of course, if the parent comes in the room, you're still going to get caught just without getting caught. You know what I'm saying? They're going to know something's going on. At least it gives your parents like the, at least in their head, they can like deny it to themselves. Like, like maybe, maybe they were just they, wrestling. Yeah. And they <laughs> fell off the bed, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree with that. Okay, so Charlie, we learn, is trying to make it to home plate. All right, you get where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys get it, right? Okay, but he keeps getting stuck at first base, it seems. <laughs> yeah, it seems like Amy's just not willing, which is totally understandable. Plus, so, again, wait, can we just mention these kids are in high school? Yes, these are high. This is going to be important later on. So, <laughs> anyway, I feel like that's weird you brought up there. Now I'm talking about all. Well, that's why we're talking baseball, okay? That's why we're talking. Hey. I'll tell you what, our next movie too is Friday the third not Friday, I keep saying Friday the thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street. There's also high school kids in that, and there's gonna be another it, it was a different time in horror movies. Yeah. I'm just gonna say that. Okay. <laughs> so this is where it's funny because Charlie's getting all frustrated because he's trying to get to home play. Amy ain't letting him and he Wait, kinda like we, we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. So he kind of like, they have a little argument over it. Give me a break. We've been going together almost a year and all I ever hear is Charlie, stop it. But actually it's funny because the movie kind of shifts to when, where it's more like Amy wants to get to home plate, but then Charlie just ignores her multiple times. I'm ready. There are two guys out in the yard and I think they're carrying a coffin. Well, okay, yeah, so, yeah, Charlie's really going after it, but then the problem is, yeah, he convinces Amy, good job, you know, it's working out. But then he sees the casket out through the window, right? Yes, okay, so, yeah, so as, like, she finally decides she's ready, right? Yeah. But then it's, like, the horror, he loves horror movies, he looks out the window, he sees that his neighbor's carrying a casket into a basement. At this point, 
he's not worried about baseball no more, you know? I'm going to be honest. If that's me, that could have, I could have seen a dead body. I would have went back. I would have back to Amy. <laughs> yeah, I took it. Uh, let's be real. In high school, fully bricked. <laughs> like, honestly, who would care about a casket? I don't care if it was a vampire. Could it could be a werewolf. It could be, the, it could be a Bigfoot out there. I could see you in the casket. I'd be like, well... See you on the other side, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you got some work to do. <laughs> do you, yeah. By the way, do you know who Amy is? Isn't she from uh, Married with Children? <laughs> Hi, Al. Isn't she the neighbor from Married with Children? Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That has to be her. It's Holy her. No, cow. it's her. Holy, what a pull. Yeah. Did you look that up? No, no, I recognized her. I thought she looked familiar, but I couldn't figure it out, dude. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Wow. Good I job. Actually, no, no, no shot of her. I actually don't find her even attractive, but in generalities is what I'm talking about. Well, I'm not about. even going to comment because she's in high school. She, there's no way she's in high school in These this kids movie. kids aren't in high school. Yeah, let's be real. She, she's cool. Whatever. Okay, so anyways, Amy ends up running out of the room because Charlie keeps ignoring her like because she's trying to do her thing, and, and he's just looking out this window focused on the neighbors, so she leaves. They end up running into Amy's mom downstairs. They, they don't make it very far, where I thought that was kind of funny because basically Amy's like mad at him for not just boning yeah and they're arguing like right in front of the mom almost you yeah know? it's 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 an awkward scenario plus you'll see this play out throughout the movie there's constantly this like back and forth between them like charlie wins amy over but then charlie ignores her and amy gets mad yeah which actually is kind of fun i mean it's annoying it's almost frustrating to watch to be honest as like you can remember yourself in the day it's like dude stop looking out these windows I mean, I think it's a metaphor to men and how they treat women. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, yeah. So they're downstairs. Well, Charlie sees the neighbors again, looks out the window, and he just totally ignores Amy as she leaves. Like, again, moments ago, they were about to hook up. It's a big moment in, in a young man's life. He's totally spaced out again. Yeah, but, you know, honestly, though, he's right. Like, there's something weird going on next door. He's not wrong. There is but, a vampire. You know what's funny, though, with this movie? It's like the dialogue. Like, okay, I'll put it this way. I didn't get to know very much about any of the characters. I feel like the whole movie is, like, convincing or explaining. Not yeah. much, like, talk. Yeah, you're right. There's not a whole lot of, like, getting to know who they really are. Name one thing you really know about Amy. Or or evil. <laughs> Amy's ready. She's ready to go. You don't have to all do it. Way. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> evil evil's really annoying. Okay. So, anyways, Charlie's mom or Amy leaves. Charlie, we learned that it's not just uh, it's not their normal neighbors. We learned it's new neighbors that moved in, and Charlie's mom's like fully horned up because she's like needs a new man in her life. Yeah, apparently, it's, I don't know if they explained it. The dad's not around though. I don't think they do. I don't really care. No dad. The mom's kind of a ditz too, right? Daddy wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if I call her a ditz. She's just a lonely. I would lonely say mother. later in the movie when she invites the vampire over, when Charlie's been telling his mother that he's afraid of the neighbors, that's a bad move. Questionable. Questionable. All right, we transition to the high school and meet the most annoying character in the movie. This is Ed Evil. Well, that's the point to a pop quiz, Brewster, to surprise you. Finally find out what you really like. Buzz <laughs> off, Evil. Or Evil Ed, one of the two. I mean, this guy is so... I, I want to say a bad actor. I, I don't, I'm not even sure what's going on. I just got very confused on his character as a whole. Well, it's like, are they friends or not? Great question. Because it seems throughout the whole movie that they don't like each other. Yeah, but they're like, also really good friends. Because Charlie calls him evil. He hates being called evil. But they, yeah, they don't seem to like each other at all. No. But then Charlie later will see, goes to him for advice. And they're, they're part of a group. Amy, evil, and Charlie. But it doesn't make a whole lot of sense why. Plus, evil's constantly doing this weird laugh. Oh, dude, oh. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. It's a, to, to where I don't know if he's like being sarcastic or serious. Like, I don't know what he's trying to por portray sometimes. Dude, it's he's annoyance. Or he's annoying. Yeah. He's an annoying character. So, I mean, because you could have like the cool kid that's into horror, maybe even a little annoying or something. But like, God, he's so like, he's that shrill laugh. <laughs> Would you say he's the most annoying character you've ever seen in a movie. He's up there. I think he's the most annoying. He's, he's, right, he's close. All right. So anyways, back at school, we see Amy's still not happy. She kind of barges by them. 
pushes him out the way, which Charlie's like, maybe, whatever. <laughs> so Charlie goes back home, finds a lady of the night going into the neighbor's house. Yeah, I would see an attractive lady going in. Charlie takes note. <laughs> he did take note. <laughs> Anyways, he ends up upstairs doing a little nighttime studying when he hears a scream. <laughs> so this movie jumps around a lot okay Dude. so i'm trying to i'm trying to like keep it on path without getting to every detail i told you before we started i said you're gonna have a hard time because it's literally like like the the school scene it's like they were at the house at charlie's house then they go to the school scene literally for like a minute and then yeah. they're back here at the house well not for long because now they're at the burger spot no it bounces all <laughs> over the place so charlie and amy they reconnected the burger spot they make up until i mean like things are going good things are going great then the news comes on and we learn that a lady of the night is dead and it's actually the second dead body they found recently so they're finding dead bodies charlie did, did now is this where charlie connected that he saw that lady i this is where he connects this is also where evil ed gets very happy finding out that both their heads got cut off both of them had their heads chopped off can you believe it Again, e evil. I'm not even gonna try to explain it. He's just annoying. I don't even understand what he's doing. But you know what I'll say? Can I give a spoiler? What? Uh, no, I won't give a spoiler. I think his character actually works later in the movie. Okay, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I mean, yeah, we'll go with that. All right. So again, Charlie ignores Amy, and she leaves after smashing a burger in his face. But the main thing is, Charlie now thinks the neighbors next door are vampires, or they're at least killing people. Oh, for sure, because like I, sh it was very, very, it was like verified. Like he saw, they showed a picture of the girl, and it was like the same girl that just walked into the neighbor's right. house. So he's he's got a situation, which I honestly feel a little sorry for him. It's a tough situation to be in, where you got to explain to the world that there may be vampires living next door it, to you. It is tough. <laughs> It is tough. And he's dealing with this relationship. He's also got to do homework. Yeah, it's just, it's got a lot, a lot on his plate right now. I think so. So Charlie goes home, decides to, well, actually, before he goes home, he goes over to the neighbors. This is, again, a quick scene where he just decides he's just going to go into the basement. Yeah, he wants to peek around. <laughs> but he gets caught immediately. Hey, kid! By Billy. So you learn that the neighbor, there's Jerry, who's going to be the vampire. We'll meet him here in a minute. And Billy is like his dude well it's like the familiar isn't that the term but i don't think he is that okay that's a, we'll get to that later i don't know what he is but he's not a vampire he's not but he also can take a lot of bullets i i, I again I don't, <laughs> I don't know what he is but i will say his performance i actually really liked in this movie i think he does a great job at being creepy i think he might be a vampire well we'll talk he can't because he he's a, around in the daytime good point werewolf I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're, okay. There's a, we got, there's they, like, yeah, 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 yeah. We got to talk about that. Okay. So Charlie ends up having a good old night watching uh, horror movies. He's got a bunch of junk food, some porno mags on the ground. Oh, did he? Yeah. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> so he wakes up and he looks across his through, cause his window basically is, it's like, right. If you look out his window, you see it in the second story of the house right next door. Yeah, right in the vampire's house window, which happens to be open, blinds open, all that. And he's seen, he gets a little treat tonight because there's a nice, attractive woman undressing. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, this is where we first see Jerry. He comes into the room and it looks like he's about to bite her neck when he notices Charlie creepily watching him from next door. Right. Which I like. I like this part. Because, well, I mean, one, come on. Yeah, it wasn't bad to look at. Come on, guys. You with me? You with me? <laughs> but also, then you see, like, the vampire's hands. So, Jerry, his hands, they kind of, like, look distorted, right? Kind of weird. Well, yeah. And the fingers are long. Well, because first you see the fangs, because he isn't just biting. Like, he has fangs now. And then he goes to shut the window. They show his hands, and they're like claws. Dude, I, you know what I constantly think through? I like to do this in these movies. It's why they usually scare me. They used to before my heart got cold, <laughs> but I'm like, what would you do in that scenario where, you know, there's a vampire living next door to you. You pretty much see it. How do you convince everyone? I don't well, think you mentioned I, they're vampires. I mean, now you do like surveillance, <laughs> you have but now he knows, you know, cause he well, saw, so I wouldn't sit in my room with a light on just staring at somebody. No, actually, that's a good call. Like, I would shut the lights off, and i do a little blind peek, you know? Sounds like you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, where would we say he has long... He's, oh, yeah, lots of eye contact, fangs, fingernails, whatever. He ends up running out of the house. Okay, so this is a this is a weird one where he, like, 
sees Billy carrying a body in like a trash bag, which it doesn't even look like a body to be honest. It's like not heavy at all. Yeah. So the, so Charlie saw, so Charlie saw the vampire vampire saw Charlie through the window. Charlie gets scared, runs downstairs. The familiar Billy is carrying the body out. You're right. Yeah. Which, so it, it's kind of understood that that was the lady that he was going to bite. I don't know. I think or it, just a dead body. Who knows? It seems like it's her, I guess already. I don't know. It happens very quick. Anyways, Charlie ends up going out into like a bush and it's it's a, it's our hedge, really, is what it is, and it's not a good hiding spot. There's no way you're gonna hide behind this thing. No, I mean it's a bad. Yeah, but he panicked. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of like dove down in it. Anyways, you see, they kind of imply they don't show this probably because it was hard to do at the time. But Jerry comes down as a bat and transforms into a human. Well, because it's almost a camera shot from the roof. And it's like going up and down. And you hear the moving, like the running noise, <laughs> like he's running off the roof or something. Well, that, like that. was the weird part because at first I'm like, do they expect us to think he like jumped off the roof? I didn't realize it was a bat until later on when he when he kind of says it. Yeah, I mean, it was silly, but I I don't know. I like it. I like I like the way they had to do things back in the day. I like the corniness of it too. Oh, to yeah. be honest, it's good. Well, Jerry confirms it is a girl because he like gives a purse to Billy, like, hey, don't forget this. So it's the girl's purse. Well. Of course, Charlie's mom comes out and starts yelling, Charlie, Charlie, gives up his hiding spot. Again, Jerry sees him. The mom's a ditz. Can be. Yeah. She's also kind of a drinker, so. Well, jeez, man. You're... Well, no, I'm just saying that's what she is in the movie, right? Is she a drinker? I didn't even notice that. I might be thinking of actually Nightmare on Elm Street. I think you're getting blended, bro. I don't think of Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't remember her 100% drinking. that's Nightmare on Elm Street. I was like, I don't think she drank at all in this movie. <laughs> I don't think she did either. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, there's a, there is a strange scene here where Jerry like sees him in the bush and then he throws his apple he's eating at him. <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice that. Oh, it's just weird because he like looks, they're like looking at each other and you know they would see each other. And then he just like tosses his apple at him and then he walks over to pick up his apple. Or uh, It was weird. Well, I mean, a lot of it's like the vampires, or well, vampire and his familiar, letting Charlie know that they know what he's up to. It's right? not a familiar. I'm calling him a familiar. Okay. His friend. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So Charlie now has to go around, tell everyone, I don't know, he tries to tell people there's a vampire. Nobody believes him. The guy did have fangs. So don't you see what that means? Wait, let me guess. What? He's a vampire. A what? So he ends up going to the authorities, which... I don't know, interesting move, but it works, I guess, because he actually gets a cop to come over to the house. It works if you just say, like, hey, I think these people killed a woman. You don't even have to mention the vampire thing, right? Because he saw the woman go in their house. That woman's now dead. That's like, come on. That's See, good evidence. There. I think he tried to start that way. He but did. Then, <laughs> yeah. Then he basically got put in a corner where he's like, forget it. This guy's a vampire. That's why he's not here. He's in the basement. He's in a coffin. Well, that's what I like about this movie is like he tries to hold it in and then he's had enough and he's got to let like the truth out. Uh, that's a lie. I saw him carry her body out in a plastic bag. Let's look in the basement instead. What's down there, Charlie? Yes, Charlie. What's down there? Find Jerry Dandridge in it, sleeping the sleep of the undead. Ooh. What are you talking about? He's a vampire. Uh-oh. And he bit her on the neck. But it sounds crazy. Actually, it is good because he you can tell he's like, once it's said, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> now the cop doesn't believe him. So yeah, they were in Jerry's house with Billy. He's, he explains like the cop is investigating until he learns that it might be a vampire. Then he's like, oh, Charlie, why are you, why'd you bring me over your kid? And, and they leave. Well, and I'll say this. So Billy, the, the work, I'm calling the familiar because it. Billy, so the vampire, the idea is it's the daytime, so Jerry's sleeping, and yeah. Billy's watching the house. Well, I like I like how uh, Billy is the whole time, though, because he's kind of, like, coy. It's like he's playing into it, like, into, like, oh, it's a vampire. No, you know, he's kind of teasing Charlie in front of the cop. Yeah. But they both know that Charlie knows that he is a vampire. <laughs> so it's just kind of a funny dynamic to me. <laughs> now, we also see, and this is one that's repeated in many movies, a picture on Jerry's wall or it's on the ground. It's like a that that uh, Charlie uncovers that looks exactly like Amy. Yeah, yeah we got we have seen this this trope so many times. Yes. <laughs> happens a lot. So that's good that definitely won't come back. It's so funny though when that happens because it's not like it looks like her. It looks like her. You know what I'm it saying? Is her. Yeah, it's like her <laughs> in the picture. <laughs> yeah. So Charlie decides at this point he's gonna take off, go to Evil's house to get some vampire advice. Uh, 
Apparently, evil's the vampire killer master. Okay, so th- so this part I I think is weird because he so Charlie who they've introduced like knows a lot about horror, watches horror all the time. This is actually one of the continuity or like plot holes that we'll talk about later too. He watches Vampire Hunter. Like, that's what he's watching when we see the start of the movie. Right. Why would he have to go to someone to learn about vampires? Exactly. He went there, and I'm like, hold on. I think you're more knowledgeable than Evil is. Yeah, I mean, Evil, come on. I mean, he did give him good advice, but it's like, Charlie should know all. He acts like he didn't know. It's like, of course, you you watch the vampire show all the time. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Well, you found the plot hole. Yeah. So evil gives the the classics you learn, you know, there's garlic, there's the cross, holy water. And of course you can't invite a vampire. If you don't invite him into the house, they can't get in. Right. Right. So Charlie goes home and he starts securing his room up, which he doesn't give her. He just like nails the window shut at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't really take much of the advice. No, actually he didn't. You're right. <laughs> he <laughs> he will later, but whatever. But at this point, uh oh sorry so he's upstairs he secures the window jerry comes into the house right now is where i'm getting concerned that not only charlie's gonna die his mom's gonna be binged by jerry oh wait when you said jerry <laughs> wait when you say come to the house the mom brought him in yes yeah it's just and it's nighttime now so you're right yeah it's really funny that's what i like about the dynamic because it it really seems at times like the vampire jerry is messing with charlie well he is yeah, yeah. it's which makes it fun yeah it does make it fun yeah so you're like Oh, dude, this dude's diabolical. He's going to hook up with his mom. <laughs> and his mom's not, I mean, she's into it. Oh, she's DTF. What's she doing here? I invited him over for a drink. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically Jerry comes in the house. His mom's let him in, so now that's, he can just come and go as he pleases. What's the matter, Charlie? Afraid I'd never come over without being invited first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she like really like gave him the go ahead. Again, Charlie, this is a, this is what I'm talking about with the mom. It's like Charlie had been like explaining to her about he thinks it's a vampire. He's very concerned. She just blows it all off. And then why that? She's like, okay, my son's afraid of this person. I'm just going to bring him in the house and try to hook up with him. <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we transition over to nighttime and Jerry is now, now like Charlie's up in his room. His mom's passed out. I think they're both asleep for a little bit, whatever. Jerry ends up breaking into the house, makes his way. He like locks the mom's room shut so she can't get out. I do actually think that part was really cool the way he did that. Cause he, it shows the power of the vampire where he pulls the door and like, it like busts down the frame of the door and it like jams it into the wall or something. Yeah. It was kind of, was yeah, cool. that was kind of interesting. I like yeah. that too. So he ends up going to Charlie's room, grabs him by the neck, basically gives him a choice, which I thought this was actually kind of reasonable. He's like, you can basically like forget about me and I'll forget about you. Or we can go the other route. Well, Charlie goes for the cross kill. (laughs) Well, okay, yeah. So that is a good point real quick. He does this throughout the movie. It's like he doesn't really seem to want to kill uh, Char. What's his name? Was it Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. It just. Remind me what what dog's name Charlie? There's a Charlie dog. There is a Charlie dog. It's a book. I, it's a book. Anyways, but uh, throughout the movie, he gives Charlie this choice. Like, hey, we could just forget about it. I don't really don't want to deal with you, to be honest. I just want to do my thing in my house. Like, leave me alone. But Charlie won't let it go. <laughs> Charlie, no, he's he's after him. I mean, he is a vampire hunter fan, you know. Yeah, uh, no, I'm with Charlie. He's doing the right thing. I mean, girls are getting murdered at a pretty staggering rate at this point. It's like every other day. Yeah, every day, actually. I mean, the, he's not a very, like, discreet vampire. Like, he just brings them to his house and kills them. Well, with the window open. Like, the blinds are open. Yeah, he hasn't even shut up the, the house. Not a good vampire. Why would that be open anyways? If you're a vampire, you're going to keep that stuff shut. Well, that's what's funny, too, is it, when the movie started in the beginning, you see the familiar, he's painting the, the windows black downstairs uh-huh why wouldn't he do that upstairs too uh well i know yeah they should be like why would it be open yeah i, I know why because that movie would suck <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't see anything <laughs> yeah yeah so you know, charlie tries to get him with the cross ends up getting hung out the window like it does like he goes with the cross immediately stopped by jerry and he gets hung out the window and uh charlie ends up like reaching and finding a pencil and this was kind of weird so he stabs him Causing a 720 spin transition. That Which spin. I did love the spin. It was like he was on a Roomba. <laughs> where it was like... Yeah, it was the corniest <laughs> spin. I loved it, though. I love it, too. But now, why did it... I don't understand why it hurt him so bad. Is it because it's a wood pencil? Oh, maybe. Was it a wood pencil? 
I imagine. I couldn't figure it out. I'm with you, too. I'm like, oh, there must be something in that pencil that's unique. But I guess apparently wood. I think I'm I getting know. like werewolves confused. They're silver, right? Okay, but you're right, though, because my first thought is like, oh, is that silver in the pencil that then or the whatever he stabbed him with? Was that what made him like react so badly to it? But that's werewolves? I think so. I don't. Yeah, they're silver it. bullet, right? Yeah. So I don't know what that this was. I think it was wood. So I guess vampire. I, I I don't know. I guess I never looked into like when you stab him with a steak in the heart. Like it, uh, is it's a wood thing? I just thought any steak would work, but who knows? I don't know. Well, yeah, 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 you're right. It, but I'm with you. It's confusing. Yeah. So, anyways, Jerry does like a full vampire transition, which again, I, I like these effects. They're corny, but they're cool. They actually kind of. I mean, they look cool. They're kind of corny for nowadays, but I, I like them. Yeah, I think he looks creepy too. It works. Yeah, so Jerry's mom ends up what? Sorry, Charlie's mom ended up waking up, which then Jerry just decides, you know what? Forget it. He's gone. Yeah, so it's just kind of funny because it's not like I mean, at any time Jerry could have killed everyone. Yeah, but he's choosing for some reason. You know, I guess what it is is like he lives there. It's probably annoying. He's like, hey, I want to keep doing my thing. I don't want to have to move because if I kill you guys, it's gonna, I'm going to be a suspect. I think that's probably makes sense why he doesn't want to kill them. It's reasonable. Yeah. But yeah. Even though he was going to kill Charlie. <laughs> I mean, for sure, he was about to murder him. Yeah. Which wouldn't be good because I think they would, he'd be like the first suspect. But you know what he does? <laughs> Dude, this is hilarious. Do you know what he does after he leaves? What? He messes up Charlie's car. No, what is it? I just destroyed your car, Charlie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was kind of just effed up. Yeah. It's so, like, yeah. Because like temper tantrum. Well, he doesn't even like. It's like he's gone. Not it doesn't seem like a very like a long long time passes, but then he just calls over to Charlie. Yeah. So anyways, he gets on the phone with Charlie and tells him, yeah, he destroyed his car and he's going to kill him tomorrow night. Yeah. It's like, well, why did? First of all, I think it's hilarious that vampire gets mad and kill, destroys the car, but then it's like, why don't you just kill him right now instead of tomorrow? Yeah. I, yeah whatever. <laughs> let's not, let's not get because it's it, we'll just go with the movie. All right. Yeah. No. No. I hey, I love the what it's doing. I'm just saying it, it's stupid. It is stupid. Well, because yeah. he legit could have just killed him like in two seconds it's in like his room. Just fly your little bat self over to the house and kill him right now. <laughs> you see him. <laughs> well, he, why didn't you just kill him in the room? Because who cares if his mom? His mom will find him either way, right? She can't even get out of the room. Yeah. So you could kill him and go go home. Yeah. Whatever. All right. So Charlie decides at this point. His only hope is to get the legendary Peter Vincent to come help him. So Peter Vincent is the vampire hunter from the show Friday night that he watches. Yeah. He's the typical actor, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you've ever seen these actors in the movie, he's doing something he doesn't believe in. He's kind guys, of this theatrical he's, guy. He's not actually a vampire hunter. He's yeah. a character on a TV show. Correct. Charlie should have probably figured this, this out at his age, but. That you're right. That's a little concerning. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we he confronts Peter, ends up freaking Peter out because he's like Peter thinks this kid's crazy. Reasonable, right? Right. And he drives off. So that didn't work at all. Now Ed and Amy, evil Ed and Amy, arrive at Charlie's room. I forget why, but they end up going over there. They find Charlie like has fully decked this room out now at this point, where he's got candles everywhere, crosses, garlic. He's got it all. Yeah. Right. His plan is to go into Jerry's basement and just kill him. Gonna go next door, find his coffin, and pound this to his heart. Now, this part made me laugh, because you could just imagine if you didn't know there was vampires, and you, if you just went to your friend's house and you saw this, <laughs> you'd be like, this guy's lost his freaking mind. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, he's gonna murder someone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's totally transformed his room. Like, he got all these, like... I mean, he's got an absurd amount of candles. Like, is that... The candles have nothing to do with it, right? Are they, like, holy candles? Is that what it is? I don't know. Like a Catholic thing or something? I, I have no idea. You're right. I don't, I'm not sure. It looks it, cool. So I, it did. It uh, but cool. it's also like a big fire hazard there. I mean, that's a lot of work, too. How do you buy that many candles? Where do you even find that? Yeah, that'd be... Do they? Matter. Yeah, do they have like uh, Hobby Lobbies back then? Or So wait, is this the next day? The next night? Is that what the, when this is? I don't even know what... Is this even daytime, nighttime? I don't even know. Yeah, who cares? We'll get to it eventually. I don't yeah. actually. I don't even remember. Because I do get lost in the time in this movie. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Because basically, at this point, Amy convinces Charlie, like, hold up. Her and Ed will go over to Peter Vincent's house and convince him to help. So they want to get the actor to help them convince Charlie that the next door neighbor is, is not a vampire. Yeah, everyone still thinks he's not a vampire. It's more like we have a crazy friend. We just have to like play along with this for a minute. Again, Charlie is just trying to convince the world of what he sees and what he knows that there's a vampire living next door. Yes. 
So when we go over to Peter's house, you kind of learn Peter isn't doing great. He got fired from his Friday night show. He's a little hard up for cash. Some back and forth takes place where basically Amy offers him 500 bucks. Peter's in to help out. Yeah, yeah. You see, he really does believe his next door neighbor is a vampire and he's planning to kill him. Your friend needs a psychiatrist, not a vampire killer. And so you see... I'll give you money. I'll take it. So it's now Peter, Amy, Evil are going to help Charlie on this adventure. First, they, though, they call over to Jerry's house to, like, talk to him about it. Yeah, because the whole idea is that they're going to, they want to help Charlie out because they think Charlie's insane. And they're like, hey, we're going to call Jerry, who is the vampire, and, hey, we want to do this thing in front of Charlie. We want to prove to him that you're not a vampire. Right. Now, before they even, like, while this phone call takes place, there's some red flags going on here. I, I think so, yeah. So as they're trying to prove he's not a vampire, he admits he won't do crosses. Yeah, he doesn't want them to do the cross with him because he's a born-again Christian, and that's sacrilegious. Yes. Bad excuse. <laughs> Bad excuse, <laughs> yes. Then he also says he won't do holy water until Peter convinces him it's actually just tap water. Yeah, it's like, to me... Uh, you know, even roll me right now. If I went into that scenario, I'd be like, okay, I don't know. Now I'm kind of thinking vampires exist and you might be one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's a weird thing. Before I was more of 50 50 now. Yeah, dude, honestly. Well, and then his last thing, caveat, he can't see them till 6 p.m. Yeah. Oh, he's going to be out. He's going to be out. So obviously sleeping, but. Yeah, I mean, the only other thing he could have said is, like, no, and no mirrors. And then it's just like, okay, this guy's a vampire. Yeah, yeah he could you be more I mean? of a vampire. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, lots of red flags. Long story short, they all end up arriving over at Jerry's house. So, you got the whole gang here now. The four, they're three kids and Peter Vincent, right? Right. First of all, I noticed Jerry had so many clocks. And I, at this point, I noted, I'm like, why does he have so many clocks? I didn't understand it until I realized it comes up later, comes up later. Vampires, maybe they need to know a certain time that they need to go back to bed. Yeah. And there are a bunch of cuckoo clocks, not just like a clock. Cuckoo clocks. You Aren't say they cuckoo. What's cuckoo. that remind you of goosebumps? No long legs. Oh, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> that was okay. Good. Now. All right, here we go. So this is when they first meet Jerry. This is my hot take, and I think we're on the same page. Jerry is a vampire child predator. Now, who are these two attractive young people? Yeah, I mean, Amy's in high school, and he is very, very much into her. Very, very attracted to her. Like, this dude's glazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we find out. She looks like someone he knew in the past. Yes, it's one of those where you're for a minute you're almost like, is this supposed to be a reincarnated person? You know, sometimes they do that. Well, again, the problem is they show you the picture and it looks just like her. So it's like, that's way too close. Like it's her. So but, that's why it's confusing. And then they, they give you no backstory on it either. No. So which is fine. Whatever I, it works for the movie. Yeah. So anyways, this is the first time where I'm telling you, you're going to see this predatory actions, but don't worry. It gets better. Oh, in the club, it gets <laughs> <Yeah>. wild. <laughs> so they decide they start testing Jerry. They give him the holy water where Jerry, again, he like kind of checks in the fireplace. I guess it's to let us know it's not holy water. It really is just tap water. I mean, that is him going on a limb. I was thinking about that. I'm like, if I was a vampire, I'd probably just sprinkle a little bit of the water <laughs> on my thumb to make sure, right? Maybe a little, like, waft real quick. Yeah, Because like, yeah, uh, he ends up just drinking the whole thing. Right. And guess what? No problem. Yeah, so at that point, everyone's like, yep, he's not a vampire. Yeah, and Charlie's like, what? No way. Why did that work? <laughs> Charlie's so funny because he's like, dude, I don't know what's going on, but this is wrong. <laughs> yeah, th this is a problem. So they're all satisfied. They kind of They kind of go to leave. But then uh, Peter. Peter drops his mirror that he has. No, breaks. no, no. I'm oh, sorry. No, first he opens his mirror to like just look at it. And then he notices Jerry ain't in that mirror. Yeah, no reflection. What's that mean? Vampire. So now Peter knows he's a vampire, gets startled, drops his mirror like a moron, and shatters on the ground. But he picks it up, but he leaves a shard. Yes, he does leave a shard. So they all leave. Peter tries to just bail out, but they basically kind of put some pressure on him to where he finally confirms like, okay, I didn't see his reflection. Yeah. Peter admits it outside to, to everyone. So now, you know, Peter takes off. And also what happens is the vampires get like, during that whole scene, they're on to something weird happened. Like they might be onto us now. Well, yeah, there was definitely a shift in the, in Peter's behavior. Right. Right. So Peter takes off, leaves the kids. Now they decide they're going to walk Amy home. So Charlie, Ed and Amy, 
They did, at some point, Ed decides he's going to split up and walk down a dark alley by himself. And it's 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 night. It's like late at night. Yeah, he does he does a classic prank where he screams. Everybody runs over. He pretends he got bit by by a vampire. It was just a prank. Kill me before I turn into a vampire and give you a hickey. <laughs> I hate you. Call him Ed. I, let's call him evil. I like, he's just annoying. Yeah, I didn't even know his name was Ed. <laughs> and if there's one thing I've I've learned, especially after playing a little game called Until Dawn, you don't do these pranks. Not in a horror movie, you don't. Pranks are always bad. Yeah. Kids love to do them. They always turn out bad. Yeah, no. Anyways, so uh, it, the funny thing is Amy actually found it kind of funny. But anyways, they end up walking <laughs> off. So Charlie and Amy walk home. Ed continues down this very dark, very steamy, trash-filled alley and ends up meeting Jerry. So Jerry arrives, corners Ed, and basically offers Ed to join the dark side, and he takes him in under his coat. Yeah, so he gives him kind of a choice, and Ed evil, evil decides like, "Hey, you know, forget it. I'll be a vampire." And this is where he turns actually to more fun character. <laughs> yeah, this is where his personality fits a little more. Yeah, it's like he be, we're gonna see he becomes an annoying vampire, maybe vampire. I'm not sure what he is. Yeah, well, I am, but yeah. Anyways, here we'll, we'll go on. So Charlie and Amy walk away. They hear another scream, but they're like, oh, he's just playing around. But then there's like a power surge, knocks out the power. There's like a fuse box that's like ripped apart. It's like, I don't know what's going on at this point, but nothing good, right? Right. They see Jerry all of a sudden appear, and he's following them. And no matter where they go, he just appears in front of them. It is funny, too, because they're they're like, yeah, we want to be around people. But then like they run away from people. Because they're, they're in front of the club, and then they're like, they run down a dark alley. Yeah, but then they go back to the club. Exactly, but it's like, why? Why didn't you just wait by all the people? And the funniest thing to me is how dated this, these clubs are. Oh, dude, it's so 80s. I mean, I haven't been to a club in years, but it's just funny. But, but none of our clubs looked like that. I mean, the music's there. Oh, you know. Yeah, it's totally different. Anyway, so Charlie, go, they go in, Charlie and Amy. They're in the club. Charlie finds a payphone, which is funny because those don't exist anymore. Dude, that's hilarious, right? That's not a thing. No, well, even landlines earlier. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if this movie. Yeah, they, yeah they're he, using landlines. That's not a thing, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but actually, I didn't even think about that. That just seemed normal. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Ed decides he's going to call. Uh, not Ed. No. Charlie, Charlie decides he's going to call Vincent. Right, right. He's gonna get more again. Vincent's like his only hope. I think that's what it like. This whole thing's about Peter Vincent, the vampire guy. Yeah, he's got to get him to come help him. And at this point, Amy drifts off, and again, Charlie is very bad at like multitasking. He can like he'll get fixated on one thing. He can't pay attention to both. He really does. Yeah, and it's constantly Amy like not getting his attention. All right, now we're about to get hot and heavy. Okay. <laughs> So Amy makes her way onto the dance floor because Jerry's Jerry's out there and he kind of puts her under like a hypnosis. Yeah, well, which is like a typical thing with vampires, I think, is like they can do that. And yeah, you see, we can talk about how he walked by multiple times. Yes, he does. The he just walks back and forth. Yeah, like <laughs> this is the craziest scene. <laughs> Amy's looking out into the club, and he Peter just walks by, staring at her, like not once, not twice, like three, four, five times. It's, I don't know even know what he's doing. Cause if you were just standing, you'd be like, what the F? Like, cause he's just walking like back and forth. Yeah. You could just walk straight towards me. He's yeah. just staring at her. Yeah. I think this is the hypnosis part though. I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's hypnosis or is it supposed to be him? Like being mysterious, like disappearing and reappearing. I think it's both. But if you think about hypnosis, you know, you see them hold the wall. Usually like hold something no, maybe up. Maybe tick tock, tick tock, you know, you're watching with your eyes. I, that's why I thought this was kind of that. Tick tock, tick tock. I want to dance with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way this goes. Heck anyway, no. so they I end up going on the anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so they end up going on the dance floor, and okay, we usually have to again. I have to clarify: this is a high school girl. This is a fully grown man, and man, I mean, he just starts grinding up on her. Uh, yeah, lots of grinding. He, like grabs her lower leg and moves his hand upwards. There's a inner thigh grab that makes me very uncomfortable. Oh God, I know. I was watching this. I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> like he's rubbing. There's lots of rubbing. There, there's gyrating of hips. Like it's all bad. But then, it, so at a point, she kind of like is into it because I think she's hypnotized, and she does a drop low on him where. It's getting really uncomfortable. Yeah, you're right. She fully fully dives into this one at one point. Correct. I mean, I thought this vampire. 
<laughs> yeah, I hope you beeped that. I have to beep it. <laughs> Dude, seriously, all I'll say is this dance did get me uncomfortable. No, legit. I'm like, okay, it's weird. She's in high school. She's young. I just didn't like it, but I mean, whatever. It's He's evil. Yeah. So anyways, they end up, uh, that's why I said, do vampires get a pass on this? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> so stupid at the same time ed ends up by the way so he's again he got taken under uh jerry's you know vampire control he's become part of it yeah he ends up showing up at peter's house where you see that he's been bitten now so he's transformed into a vampire right so, yeah so what we're what we're seeing is that the vampire we, we forgot to mention the vampires know that peter uh char well yeah peter charlie and amy know they're vampires now because the vampires saw the glass shard on the ground and so they connected it that, oh, he saw that I'm a vampire because I have no reflection. That's why he was startled. That's why the vampire hunter was startled in the house, right? Yeah. So now they're cleaning up the mess. They got to get Peter. They got to get Amy and Charlie. Okay. Yep. So uh, evil is over with Peter Vincent. <laughs> fully transformed into a vampire. Peter ends up crossing his head. I liked it too. And, and evil is so annoying that he works really well as a vampire. He just is extremely annoying. You know, who he reminds me a lot of is uh, like a character from the lost boys. Dude, I was thinking the same thing. It's, I think it's more of like the looks or something. Yeah. There's something about that. Totally lost boys to me. Yeah. One I of our favorite movies, by the way, well, we got to do that soon. Yeah. It's, that's a classic Santa Cruz. Come on now. Anyway, so Charlie ends up like trying to stop. So we're back at the club. Charlie ends up trying to stop Jerry from, I mean, really taking this girl's he's virginity. To, I mean, he's clearly trying to bang his girl, <laughs> <laughs> which it doesn't work. Like he gets his hand smashed. Jerry ends up walk, trying to walk out with Amy until security arrives with Charlie. Charlie brought security over. Yeah. So uh, Jerry makes light work of this, slashes one's throat, lifts the other dude off the ground and tosses him. But when he slashes, it caused like chaos in the club and people start like stampeding out. Well, because it's not like he just slashed it. It's like a slash throw. He also got like the, the bouncer was thrown a distance. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, there's trouble brewing. So crowd takes off. Jerry and Amy are together. They end up getting split up because it's just pandemonium. Jerry, uh, Jerry ends up taking Amy and leaving. Right. So now Charlie's on his own. He's got to find. I mean, what does he got to do at this point? What does he do? go back to the vampire hunter you got to go peter? to peter vincent like yeah. that's the only way so charlie goes and basically learns peter vincent isn't a vampire hunter but gasses him up until peter agrees to help yeah the, that's the whole funniest part it's like he's an actor of course yeah we already went into but it. he did i mean he's got him ready to go they're gonna they're gonna work as a team now so again the it, just to get i mean to be honest i think feel like i know more about the vampire hunter than i do anyone else he's just kind of like a wormy little actor who's been playing this character has no spine. We're going to find out because faith is going to play a big role into this. Well, his faith goes in and out a little. Yeah. Maybe but this is his arc. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I actually liked it. So back at Jerry's house, he's ready to go to prison. He's got Amy. They're both naked. <laughs> he's ready. Oh, I was like ready to go to prison. <laughs> yeah. He's ready to close the deal. Oh yeah. So they're, they're like, they're not naked, but their shirts are off. We got two shirtless people here. Yeah. This, anyways, so he ends up biting her neck, though. Yeah, so he's turning her into a vampire. You know, it's not really explained why, but sure. Well, I think it makes. I think it'll come into play a little bit later. But it's also, again, he goes about the weirdest way of trying to kill Charlie. Who? The vampire. How so? Because I think this is kind of part of his plan, right? Why else would he have... It's more like tormenting him, I guess. Yeah, it is kind of that. You're right. It is more of a torture. He's trying to like torture and play with Charlie. Yeah, like it's remember like that, that girl? Like, uh, yeah, she's mine now. I banged her and turned her. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Unconfirmed if Oof. you banged her. Not yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can assume. So anyways, they end up. Uh, so then Peter and Charlie end up going back to Jerry's house. And there's a confrontation where Peter tries to. So they're on the stairs. They're. Uh, they know, obviously, th at this point, it's all in the open. He's a vampire. They're trying to kill him. Or they're they're going. That's what they're doing, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows. Well, yeah. at least the, the, our main characters, right? So Peter tries to use the cross, which I did like this scene because you, yeah, he lets him. Well, the, okay. He, sorry, my brain's getting messed up. The weird thing is, he used the cross on evil and it worked. Oh shoot, that is funny. But he pulls the cross out and tries to use it 
on uh, Jerry and it doesn't work. And then that's when Jerry explains, hey, you got to have faith. Yeah. And Jerry like melts the cross, kind of like squeezes it until it just is gone. Right. So you're right, though. It doesn't make any sense. Why did it work before and not now? Right. He lost faith that quick. Or is it that he's like, because he's like the alpha of the vampires, you have more power? Yeah, maybe it worked. We'll we'll go with with evil it worked because he's not powerful yet. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, Billy ends up arriving and knocks Charlie out. Yep. Peter runs out of house. He's gone. I love that (laughs) Peter just like bailed. And the funniest thing is he just goes next door to Charlie's house. Yeah, I think he was just going to go tell Charlie. So he's not like totally a worm. He's going over there to tell Charlie's mom. What do you know that Charlie lived there? That's what I was just going to say. I was like, hold on. How did he even know he lived there? Maybe they mentioned it before because they did arrive at the house earlier. Whatever. We'll assume maybe he was there. I don't remember that. But All right. Well, anyways, he ends up going upstairs to find Charlie's mom in bed. Nope, not Charlie's mom. It is Evil Ed wearing a Raggedy Ann wig. <laughs> I did love this part. <laughs> Again, I, I love what these killers hide. It's like, how long were you waiting in that bed? Or do you like, and why would you even think anyone would be over there? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. it was good. Yeah, it was good. So anyways, now he's battling Evil Ed, who is a vampire. Or is he? Because now <laughs> he looks like a vampire. He looks like a vampire until Peter runs out of the, he runs out of the bedroom because he's scared of him. Ends up falling on like a table, breaking it into shattering into multiple wooden pieces, sharp, sharp pieces. <laughs> and now we have a full, like just a wolf running down the hall. <laughs> yeah, evil has turned into not a werewolf, just a basic wolf. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a normal wolf. Well, they did add some red eyes. Yeah, red eyes. Yeah. So anyways, the wolf goes for Peter. Peter stabs in the heart. It falls downstairs. And then I love this. It turned into the puppet wolf. Like where it's dragging, it's trying to move, but it is the most, the funniest looking effect ever. It's not great. It's not real. It's like a puppet. I can almost see the strings where it's like moving. So anyways, the wolf ends up transforming back into evil. And this is actually kind of a long scene. It's like this transformation took forever. It almost got dramatic too. You almost felt sorry for evil. It's like this poor kid is dying now. I mean, it was pretty brutal, too. Yeah, I was okay with it, to be honest. I mean, yeah. It's a, but my thought is like, well, now Peter just caught a case because he killed a kid. Because it looks like a dead child who's been, who's been staked in the heart. Well, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of plans that are just bad. Like, when they talk about... Because they talked about Billy. Maybe this was earlier. Maybe I missed it. I forget. But where the whole plan, when they go to Jerry's, it's like, well, what are we going to do with Billy? Because Billy is a normal person and Peter says a gun. He's like, oh, I'm just going to shoot him. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, that's great. But you just broke into someone's house and shot him in the head. You know, I mean, it's going to be hard to convince a jury that like <laughs> these people were vampires. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. So anyways, Peter ends up returning to Jerry's house with his, his new killing steak, which he's already got one kill under his belt. So he's, he's bringing that over. And I got to say, I did love the smoke effects on this house. Oh, dude. I mean, it's so clearly smoke machines just bellowing it out, but I liked it. I loved it. Yeah, because it gave it like a spooky, you know, corny, spooky vibe. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so Peter ends up going to Jerry's house. He makes his way up to the second floor where he finds Charlie is trapped in a room with Amy. Yeah, so the vampires are trapped Charlie in the room with Amy. So Amy, when she turns a vampire, her her first kill will be Charlie. Yeah. You know what? Actually, now that makes sense because she probably needs to feed. She probably does. But again, I feel like this is just torturing Charlie. Like he's got to make the decision. Like he's either going to, well, he's going to have to kill her. Yeah. They want him to like kill her. (laughs) Well, no, I think they want her to, I think they want her to kill him. But doesn't Jerry throw him a steak? Like you take care of it by noon or like you better take care of this by noon or something. Here. Going to need it just before dawn. Oh, did he, I don't remember. I think that. he did, which is weird because uh, Jerry also liked her. So I don't know what's going on. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So anyways, Charlie and Vincent are outside of a door talking to each other. And they come up with a plan that uh, Vincent is going to barge the door while Charlie is screaming so that, that Jerry and Billy won't hear them. Because Jerry and Billy are working on a casket downstairs. Right. So the plan works-ish. They barge the door. But Jerry gets the sixth sense, like, kind of knows that something's up, right? Okay, so now Peter ends up having a confrontation with Billy at the top of the stairs. 
And this is where we learn Billy may be not a human. <laughs> so he ends up like coming after Char or, uh, Peter and Peter was already ready for this with it. He's got his gun and he just shoots. I mean, he shoots this guy. Well, like five times. Yeah. Well, with, I think like a headshot. Yeah. I think, well, the first, he shot him once and then he, you think he's dead, but then you see him getting up and he comes back at him and he just unloads on the dude. Yeah, so in anyways, it doesn't work though. So Billy comes up and ends up like Terminator style, like like charges up. He's almost like walks. a zombie, I would say. Zombie, yeah, he can go with that. He picks Peter up, and I don't know what he's gonna throw him out the window or something, but then as he picks him up, he gets vulnerable to the heart. Charlie gives him a stake to the heart and kills him. Well, I wouldn't say kill as much as melt him. Okay, so this <laughs> I was gonna say this is where you start to see these effects like really kick in. And it is, it's a long transition where he's like turning to slime, skin's melting. It's, it goes on for a long time. I, I loved it personally. I thought it was great. It looked, it, I thought it looked really cool. And then it ends with like a steaming skull on the ground. I, there, there's nothing better than like these old movies with the skeletons too. It's yeah. The skeleton kind of just hanging out. <laughs> yeah. I liked it too. But again, was he a vampire? I guess he was. Well, no, he, he's not though. Cause he was awake or he was outside during the day. Werewolf then? Is there another wolf in the movie? This is the problem. There's like werewolves or wolves and there's vampires and it's un there's no indication what this guy is. He starts to do his dripping green though. Do you remember when he gets stabbed? It's like green. Yeah. Like what is that? I don't know. Let us know. What do you guys think he yeah. is? <laughs> Who knows? So Jerry ends up commanding Amy to wake up and kill Peter and Charlie. So so this point, like Jerry's kind of like there's something happened. Maybe we missed it, but Jerry's like flying around the house. He's just kind of on the outside. Oh, well, we missed the scene. There was a scene where they got in a confrontation with Jerry. Is this where he turned in? Isn't that where he turned into a bat and bit I him? I don't think so. Are you talking no, no, about that's that? later on where the bat attack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's later on. There's something happened. I forget what it was. Maybe they crossed him. I forget. All right. So at this point, Jerry's kind of like flying around the house, just kind of threatening them again, trying to get Amy to attack him. And then uh, Charlie and Peter kind of split for a second where Charlie goes downstairs. Uh, Jerry comes busting through like a stained glass window and attacks Peter Vincent. Right. So we have a little Peter Vincent, Jerry battle. Peter pulls out the cross again. Jerry laughs because Peter doesn't have faith, but Peter hits him with that faith. <laughs> Peter's got the faith now and goes after him. And then this, this is like a long battle. Like this goes through multiple points. So at this point, we hear the clocks go off. You think in that window that Jerry came through, the sun is right there. Right. Like it's not coming through yet, but it's, it's rising. Right. You think, you think this is going to be the end. Yes. But no, he ends up turning into a vampire bat. <laughs> a uh, hairless bat. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's just a weird looking slimy rat bat. Oh, I, <laughs> I did. I did like it, but whatever. He ends up flying around. There's a little battle. He ends up knocking Peter down. You have hey, this bat attacking him. He, I believe the bat actually slapped Peter in the face. <laughs> at one point. I'm not kidding. <laughs> he winged him? I think he winged him. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. Well, and then he bit he bit uh Charlie. Charlie, but does that mean Charlie's gonna turn into a vampire? Uh, that's a great question, because it's a fan I don't know if vampires can turn you when they're in bat form. Yeah, in bat form, can you get turned? Unconfirmed. I don't yeah, know. I don't <laughs> know. Peter ends up holding like the bat in the sun, which makes <laughs> Jerry like fly off into the basement. This is, it, there's a lot going on. He's just taking off all over the place. They go down to the basement. Peter finds him hiding his casket, but it's locked. And then we have Amy arriving to kill Charlie. And I got to say, I love Amy the vampire. Like, how so? Her look. She's got, like, that big mouth of teeth. Oh, it is gnarly looking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think the practical effects of this movie, big fan. I think they just look cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's all. So Peter ends up driving a stake into Jerry's heart. Again, you think this movie's over. It's not. Jerry stands up. Well, more of, like, does the vampire rise? Yeah. Pulls it out. And throws it. Now, his problem is when he threw it, he broke a window in this basement. This basement has a ton of windows, by the way. A ton of windows, and we see Jerry again. Not a great vampire. Not the best. Yeah. <laughs> so he lets in a beam of light. So we have, like, multiple battles. Like, sometimes they're fighting against Amy, sometimes Jerry. But now Jerry, like, they're, uh, Charlie and Peter notice this light's coming in. It's just a long scene where they're kind of, like, throwing things and breaking open lights to kind of shine it in on Jerry. 
Yeah, yeah. But he's kind of like navigating around it. It's just, it's just like well, keeps going. And they're also trying to keep Amy from the lights. So there's a ton of stuff going on in this basement. Yeah, there is a lot. So at some point, Jerry's walking after them. Charlie, they break the windows, letting light in. But I think it like shoots him back at this point. Well, yeah, he hits like one final light hit and it like a fireball to the chest blows him against the wall. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're like near the casket or something. And he's got Peter or something almost dead. Then I don't know. Charlie breaks a window, whatever. The light blows and we see him turn into like a bad human skeleton melting <laughs> again another effect it was fun to watch and it's very long <laughs> Dude, yeah it's it's hard to there's a lot that happened in that scene anyways long story short jerry's dead amy's free yeah all is well vampires are gone all is well and now we, we transition to later everyone's safe charlie and amy are back in the room watching fright night but back in the bed back in the bed but charlie now he knows his mistakes he decides he's gonna shut off the show we're going to get down to some business. And, but well, and we also see Peter Vincent is back in his role. He got the role back in Friday night. Somehow that was related. You know what's funny? I just thought they were watching old episodes, but it's TV back then. You don't got DVR. No, no. He's been, he got his job back for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. He's back because he is now, he actually is a vampire hunter now. Yeah. Now he's real. <laughs> so he shuts it off. But as he's walking to the bed, he kind of like looks and something catches his eye from across the street. Well, across the way in the neighbor's house. But... There's nothing there. And he goes back to bed with Amy. Pan back to the window. We see two glowing red lights. And we hear Evil's voice. Uh, oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> I thought that was a good ending because I was thinking the whole time, like, how did they address the dead kid on the ground? I guess he didn't die. No. I mean, I think that's the idea, at least. Who knows? Who cares? Two scenes where yet stakes in the heart don't kill them. Ah, it's a myth. But then again, <laughs> Brewster, or not Brewster, Evil wasn't a vampire. He was a werewolf. He was turned werewolf by a vampire. So maybe stakes don't work on him. Actually, that does that does make sense. Does that so. check out? It checks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give our final rating. Zero to ten. What do you think about Fright Night? Oh, I've thought a lot about this one because it is. Okay, like wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We have to here. We got to get pins. We're going to do this on the fly. Oh, here. Gotta, I, got, I got one over here. Because so. we here. I got my own. So we're going to write down because a lot of times we give the same numbers and we want to make sure we don't like cheat or, you know, we just want to have our own. So I'm going to give mine. Okay. I'm going to write mine here. I'm going to go. Okay. All right. So okay. let me give my overview on it. I thought it was a fun movie. It was, I liked the, I just liked the whole vibe of the movie. It was fun, carefree, silly at times, you know, tip as to per usual with me. I like the campiness of it. I enjoyed watching. I do think it was slow at times and there's like little to no character development either. I didn't really get to know them very well. It was pretty much just Charlie explaining things the whole time. Okay. So, but I enjoyed the movie and overall I will give it a 7.7. 7. Ooh, 7.7. 7. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see uh, It's pretty, it's on yellow. No, I agree. This is definitely up my alley of like campy horror. I love the high school, the fun vibes, a little group of friends trying to battle this like supernatural vampire uh i liked jerry in that like he just toyed with him the whole time i yeah. thought the whole thing was fun the mom was i liked all the characters i think the characters were interesting and fun and what i would go with these movies a lot of times like rewatchability and i would totally watch this again i think it'd be good like a halloween watch too yeah i would say it's like a yearly would be cool to throw on yeah for sure so i gave it 8.7 oh one point higher See, to me, though, it just was a little too boring at times. Because, But see, I watched this three times already. But also, like, I loved the practical effects in it. So I thought that was awesome. Like, I, honestly, I think what docks it for me is I didn't feel like I really got to know the characters very well. So it's like a little empty. It felt a little empty at times. Okay. But it was All fun. Right. It's a great movie. I'd recommend it. Now it's time for us to get into some Scared Stupid. What you missed in this movie. Let's go. All right. So... In the text scene in Charlie's bedroom, Jerry has his hand around Charlie's neck and Charlie drives a pencil in the top of his hand. In the next scene, Jerry pulls his hand away and look at the pencil. It's sticking out more than halfway through his hand. If the pencil had been shoved that far down, it would have pierced Charlie halfway through his neck. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it was like really far into it. That does so, make sense. The holes in Evil Ed's neck disappear after he shows them to Peter. Oh, he's a vampire. Hilled. Werewolf, actually. I mean, I, honestly, that I don't even know if that is even a a mistake <laughs> i think it might be i mean because it's like right after whatever when jerry's in bat form attacking peter vincent he scratches the left side of his face 
But when Charlie pulls the bat off him, scratches are gone. Well, it seems like that's a theme in this movie. They disappearing scratches. Or they super super healers. Super <laughs> even the humans. Yeah. When Evil Ed gets touched by the cross on his forehead, the blistering burn is over his left eyebrow. However, in later shots after Peter stakes him, the burn is in the middle of his forehead. That's kind of funny. It must, they must have filmed it at different times, different days. I, I guess. They just, yeah, because that would be like a lot of makeup stuff. I yeah, think. right? Yeah. When Jerry stalks Evil Ed through the alley, he casts a reflection in a puddle. <laughs> Okay, that might be my favorite. (laughs) Puddle reflection. Didn't think about that, did you? I actually saw some stuff on that where people are arguing, well, it's mirrors. I I didn't know if it's mirrors or puddles. They said it has something to do with like silver in a mirror or something. I'm going to be honest. I don't even understand how mirrors work. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, honestly, right? Dude, that's like the real mystery. Yeah. (laughs) When Peter Vincent burns a cross on Evil Ed's head, Ed looks into the mirror before realizing he can't see himself. Just when Ed attacks Peter, you can see the reflection of a crew member and a red ladder in the mirror. (laughs) Well, that's even more confusing, though, because I didn't know that evil was a vampire. Unless in this movie, vampires just turn into wolves, too. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Maybe like. uh, No, you know what? I'm not even going to go there. Let's say. So Charlie is supposed to be a fan of vampire. Oh, we already did this one. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so I have two for the last. One of them was the one you already talked about. Charlie is a horror fan, but yet he doesn't know how vampires kill right. or how to kill a vampire. He shouldn't have done that. The other thing I noticed, and I thought it was on here, but in the club when he's doing the back and forth walk, and there are mirrors, and you can see his head in the mirror. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. So, <laughs> I love that because it is, that'd be really hard like to edit this, to edit his reflection out of these mirrors. <laughs> I mean, you just can't have a mirror. No. In any of these scenes, right? No. Anyways, overall, hey, Friday night, Friday night, we loved it. Great Halloween movie, yeah. Yeah, I would say give it a watch, check it out. And we want to give a thanks to all our patrons. Thank you guys all for the support, and hopefully you guys will become one pretty soon. Yeah, and by the way, I hope everyone has a happy Halloween, huh? Oh, yeah, happy Halloween, guys. <laughs> it's one of the greatest holidays. I don't know, it's just fun to fun fun times. Of course, dude, we're into horror movies. Of course, we all like Halloween. I know, it's so good. I'm almost, like, already sad. It's already almost over. I know. I don't feel like I've got a full enjoyment of it yet. No. I don't feel like it's kicked in. Maybe it will by the time this comes out. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you guys all for uh, watching, listening, liking, subscribing, leaving comments. Anyways, we'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.